Hi folks, hope you're okay today. I just want to do a critical, uh, a critique, a critical assessment of an atheist called Ozymandias, Ramesses II, uh, an intelligent guy, and uh, I just want to do a critique of some of the things that he said. In defending reason, a response to presuppositionalism, his charge against presuppositionalism is that it cannot defend its own circularity of reason. He's basically saying that when the presuppositionalist asks the atheist about to justify reason, that Ozzy says that we can accept that we have circular reason, but we can also say that we can't sort that issue out, that it's an impossibility. But also that the presuppositionalist also justifies his reason with a presumption and is also in the circularity and therefore um, is in the same boat. Um, my issue with that is that circular reasoning can be tested within reality and our presupposition that that God created this world and that God created this world rationally um, when we test our reason with reality we find that it is real and we find that there is rationality within logic and it gives us as a basis for investigating empirically nature. It gives us an, uh, a basis for rational inquiry. All because it fits reality, our presupposition. However, your presupposition is that you don't know if reality is there. And you don't know whether logic is universal or not. If you say that logic is basic laws of logic are material then they are not um, they're, they're not uh, uh, logic is not something that works across the board if you say it's immaterial then it's inconsistent with your own uh, materialist point of view etc so in other words your presupposition of the circularity of reason is not good enough to say that I have this reason I can't justify it uh, I can't justify my reason with reason. Nobody can. That's it. That's the end of the case. Well, it's not. You might come back at me and say, well, that presumes the rationality of your reason. I would come back and say, well, the general idea of a God gives the justification for the circularity of the reason. Um, and without that justificate without that understanding of God there would there would ultimately be no rationality um, ultimately you don't know even though we might know things on a general scale we don't know ultimately anything without the idea of God um, and I think that is inescapable so it's not good enough it, what you're doing is you're avoiding reality to say that there is circularity of reason and that we have this and the Christian has it and no one can answer it and that's it but we just get on doing critical reflection about whatever that is just completely dishonest if, if not willing to face the foundation our foundations whether those foundations match reality we can test those presuppositions with reality and your presupposition of circularity of reason does not fit reality. Uh, and that's my first critique. Hi folks, hope you're okay today. We're doing a critical analysis of um, Ozymandes, uh, Ramesses II. And um, we're looking at his main video now, um, Burden of Justification and Atheism my interview with Rethink uh, which is a very good uh, video and shows Ozzy at his finest in, in talking about philosophy and religion and I just want to come back at one or two things in that video um, I, I think the positive thing about what he's saying there is he says that even the atheist has a, a burden of a justification a burden of justification um, and I was pleased to hear that because often you hear atheists saying that they don't have to sh uh, prove their case in any way whatever the case that may be uh, Ozzy would say that it's not a big justification 
that they have to discharge but there, there is some justification but whichever way you look at it the atheists can't get off the hook in not giving arguments for their position so I was pleased to hear that um, what I was interested in mainly is uh, the reasons why Aussie rejects God uh, one of the reasons is psychological reasons um, so, well, first we'll go to arguments from experience. He says, well, we should be sceptical about uh, a person's claims of experience. Um, and a person should be sceptical about their own experiences. Um, I think one of the problems that I found with that argument is it lacked an understanding of experience in 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 terms of the Christian faith um, you know experience comes within a system a system of belief so if the system of belief is part of uh, evidentially backed and uh, backed from a variety of ep epistemological strands then if you have an experience that experience is part of the totality of the epistemological framework and that's something you did fail to to grasp you looked at religion um, isolated uh, a, a religious experience as an isolated phenomenon uh, taken out of it of its wider epistemological context and that was a big mistake that you made uh, secondly on the issue of experience there have been documented books that you didn't cite or didn't discuss which if you're going to discuss you should discuss uh, and that's, for example, Dr. Keener's book on miracles. Uh, if you're going to talk about these things, you have to argue with the best of the best, and you fail again to deal with the best of Christian apologetics in this area, and fail to mention him uh, and his books, uh, a world authority on that topic. Um, so that was the issue of experience. Um, your argument uh, also you talked about a person should be critical and about their faith from psychological arguments the confirmation bias and the way things work these kind of arguments can be used against atheism you know it can be shown uh, from psychology that there are psychological reasons why people hold to skepticism for example you know something might have bad might have happened to their family and they blame God for it and so they reject God that God does not exist but that rejection is not based on rationality it's based on pure emotion so your psychological arguments can be turned against you um, and then I've got one last discussion what one last thing to say and I'll finish off there hi folks uh, the next issue uh, with Aussie uh, in his longer video is he rejects Christianity on the grounds of it lacking evidences and those evidences he feels are insufficient in terms of the contradictions uh, sorry the historical the lack of historical evidence so you would expect to find he said uh, evidence about Sodom and Gomorrah about the flood about uh, the exodus etc well there is uh, archaeological evidence about the exodus uh, there are um, there is information there um, and for example there are chariot wheels in the Dead Sea and things like that so there is evidence there how strong that evidence is what that evidence is it's difficult to assess because the government um, who, own, who, who run the Red Sea or uh, I don't want to allow uh, investigation of that evidence and it's very difficult uh, on the issue of Sodom and Gomorrah there's a lot of evidence being found for Sodom and Gomorrah uh, on the issue of the flood uh, there are tectonic uh, plate specialists who have worked for secular organizations and who are world authorities who've become Christians and believe in the flood so there are scientists out there who world authorities in plate tectonics who've moved over to believing um, in the flood so there is evidence uh, you didn't cite that evidence and critique it you just made bare statements so you know um, I would encourage you to read John Wickham 
uh, and his work, his books, and to give a critique of those books, and then we can get our teeth into something. Um, and the historical evidence of the Christian faith on on Jesus Christ, you're very weak at that. You 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 are interested in Mithraism, which uh, is not it cannot really be intellectually justified. I'm happy to debate you on 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 Mithraism and Christianity. Um, one only has to read uh, the works of a skeptic like Dominic Crossan uh, to know that uh, Mithraism is just uh, not worth even bothering about. So, you know, I would encourage you to read Dominic Crossan. Uh, he's not on my side. Uh, so there's lots of evidence for the historical veracity of the New Testament um, and I've gone into loads of detail in that uh, and given specific examples. For example, there are a, a large number of fact, historical facts in the uh, Gospel of John, for example, which a lot of people don't know, um, etc. So to say that there is no historical or barely any historical information in the Gospel, in the, in the Bible, it's just, to be honest, is downright intellectually dishonest. It's just downright intellectually dishonest. And I think you get away with it because you're articulate and you're highly intelligent and you bamboozle people with some big words and people think that you know what you're talking about. But actually, you don't know what you're talking about when it comes to the historical veracity of the Bible. And... Um, and that's something I know about, so I know that you're just talking a lot of rubbish there. Um, I'll link to articles. So, so there's the history. Um, that's it, really. I've got one more argument to make, uh, and I'll I'll link to some sources that you can check out what I've said. All right, take care. Hi, folks. Uh, last video, really, um, on Aussie. Uh, the next main argument that, well, two two main two two other arguments that he made is, he was saying if you look at different ancient religions um, and comparative religion, and look at the differences of these different religions, then these difference ca differences cancel out each other and therefore, you know, shows that we don't really have to take them seriously. Excuse me. Um, a couple of arguments there. Uh, first of all, if we look at ancient religions, uh, there's a massive difference between Christianity and the other religions. And you show um, a lack of any academic understanding of ancient religions in, in what you've been saying. Uh, ancient religions are culturally specific. You have to be culturally specific about those religions, what they're saying, why they're saying them and you don't do that you're not culturally specific so it shows that you're not really well versed in these ancient religions um, and if you look at the cultural specificness of each of these religions then you can see the remarkable difference between Christianity and um, these other ancient religions and Christianity provides uh, a basis specifically how we relate to creation and that is significantly different than other religions. And it could be argued against you that there was a general model and that all the models are deviated from that general model. And that model is that there's an ontology between God, a separation between God and creation. That uh, creation is part of what God has created. But cre Creation is not something to be worshipped, but is something that has been created by God and brings glory to God and has its purposes. Whereas a lot of pagan religions or religions of the ancient Near East, uh, creation was something to be worshipped or part of the worship or in, in um, parts of creation were worshipped. So for example, sex was often worshipped by these ancient gods and these ancient religions and so it could be argued that there was one model 
that was the right model and the others have deviated so it doesn't necessarily mean that because you cancel out one model it means that it by definition cancels itself out the other argument that you could make is the fact that there are all these different religions shows you that the human nature is religious by nature and if there is this religious nature if there is a, a, a desire for religion then we have a desire for food and we know that food exists we have a desire for sex and we know that sex exists we have a desire uh, and if there is a general desire throughout human nature and in all histories in all times for God or uh, a relationship with divine then it implies that that sh should be m is to be met with some real divinity so all these competing religions will actually point to the religious nature of, of human beings and the possibility of that being met by a real divinity um, and that was your main str your strongest argument that you saw against Christianity or against the existence of God was that argument and yet paradoxically that's the easiest argument to defeat um, and those are my thoughts, Ozzy. Uh, I, I thought that your objections to Christianity, that he, I, I honestly thought, Ozzy, that you sound very intelligent, very, very smart, but actually when you get down to the nitty gritty of what you're saying, that your grasp of Christianity is very weak, your grasp of the scholarship in terms of issues that you touch upon is weak, your grasp of epistemology um, in certain areas is good but in some areas it's dishonest and that's my critical assessment of you bro and that's a fair honest critical assessment of you and what you have to say is that you come across as a highly intelligent person you come across as you, as if you know what you're talking about but when you scratch between the surface and you begin to deconstruct what you're saying it really lacks it, it there's a there's a lack of weight weightiness within what you're saying it doesn't stand up to scrutiny and i've tried to engage with you and if you want to continue that dialogue um you're welcome to come on my channel on sunday evening and talk about presuppositionalism but uh, i'm impressed by the fact that you sound very intelligent i'm impressed by the fact that you seem to know what you're talking about a little bit um when it comes to epistemology on some areas of epistemology quite dismayed that you're dishonest about some epistemological issues uh and pretty confident when you start to mention areas where i'm competent in like uh, ancient religions uh, historical jesus studies uh, psychological arguments against christianity very confident that you actually are very weak in those areas that's my assessment okay thank you for listening and if you want to respond to my uh, videos if you want to critique them underneath also feel free if you want to enter into a dialogue on my channel feel free if you don't want to feel free uh, but I I find you challenging and I wanted to think through the issues that you had to say and I just wanted to engage with what you said and I feel that I'm satisfied that I'm still strong in my faith and I don't feel I'm particularly challenged by what you're saying all right thank you and take care